All right, and welcome back to my next touch designer tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to export images and uh, videos from touch designer. And um, this is going to be the start of a, like the first video of a new series that I'm starting. That's going to be called like uh, tips, tricks and um, frequently asked questions and it's exactly about that and I'm just gonna share some uh, techniques of mine or like uh, answer some questions that you ask uh, or ask generally and um, this one is uh, about a question that I received most often I'd say and that is um, exporting so uh, I'm going to do that using the movie file out top. There's another way to export movies and that is with the export movie thing up here. Dialog, I guess. So you can use that as well, but I'm not get not going to get into that cuz I'm totally happy with the movie file movie file out top. So I'm not going to explain this. Okay. So I've just set up this very simple um network here like rendering network with a box that's that's going into the geo here and um, light a camera and a render top uh, this uh, box is just spinning around itself and yeah all very straightforward then I have a null here and um, we're gonna start with exporting an image of this beautiful render <coughs> so um, I'm gonna like the the movie file out top should usually be attached at the very end, so you include everything basically. So at the end of your network, um, I'm just gonna drop the movie file out top in here, and now you can see all this stuff. I just want an image now, so I'm gonna change the type to image, and um, there's uh, a couple of things we can do here now. So before we actually um, save this using the record here you I'm gonna um, tell touch designer where to save this so this is usually set to this Python expression and if this is set to this Python expression that you can obviously change if you know some Python um, then uh, you can also use this n so this is just gonna increment the, the value or like the number of the of the file to whatever you want to put this but um, I'm just going to use the constant, so I'm going to change it to this. And then you can either use the plus sign to browse where you want to save it. I usually just uh, have a media folder, like a folder called media in my project folder. And um, then uh, I'm going to save it in there and then call this simply export one. And then you also need to put in the um, file type. So um, there's uh, three file types I usually work with. Mostly I work with uh, JPEG. Uh, I haven't really noticed the difference between TIFF and JPEG in terms of quality, but I guess if you want to actually edit the file in, for example, Photoshop afterwards, it probably makes sense to save it as a TIFF. And if you want to have um, the alpha that you can see right now in the background, so this checkerboard, as always, like in Photoshop or something as well, means there's transparency. So if you actually want to include that in your export, you need to export it as a PNG. So just save it as that. And now if I press, like if I turn this on and off again, like I usually uh, actually press pause to record it. So I really only get that uh, frame. So now I'm gonna do that again. And now if I look in, in my folder that I saved it at, um, this is a beautiful transparent cube. All right, if you don't want to have transparency, but you want to uh, still save it as a PNG for whatever reason, then you can put a transform in here, That I, what I always do. If you watch my tutorials, you know that. Uh, and I'm, then you can just save this, uh, like change this to black. Like if you save it as a JPEG and have this turned off and then it's automatically going to be black. If you don't want to have it black, like the uh, the alpha parts, then you can change the background color here 
just pick another one. And um, yeah, it's always just good to do that, to be more in control. So and now I'm just going to record this again. And now you can see it saved a JPEG file here. Um, yeah. One thing about the resolution, as you can see here, it's 1280 by 720. Um, that is the same resolution as here, like on my render. So uh, if I put a noise here, then um, this is set to 256 by 256. So um, if I if I was to record this now, it would be those dimensions. <coughs> All right. So so much to the images. That's kind of it. Um, now I'm going to show you how to export different kinds of videos. So if you want to export a video, you need to change the type to movie. And um, it's usually set to photo motion JPEG. If you don't have the commercial license, you also can't really change this much. Um, it, like if you have a good graphics card that's NVIDIA, then you can export it as MP4 directly using the H.264 codec but apparently my NVIDIA graphics card isn't good enough to do that. <laughs> uh, or I don't know what the reason is, but I usually just save it as, like I always just save it as MOF. And then you can uh, convert it using the yeah, right software for that uh, afterwards, because uh, like platforms like Instagram and YouTube like the MP4 format a lot more. So I highly recommend converting it afterwards. All right, so first I'm going to show you how to just uh, randomly start and stop your uh, your re re uh, yeah recording. <laughs> so how to just export uh, random length. So you just hit record, and if you're happy with the result, then you just uh, turn it off again. And now in your folder that you specified here you're going to find the the exported file. Cool. So that's a very simple way to do that. Um, obviously, the the FPS is going to be whatever you type in here. And you can change the quality here. But I'll never do that. So um, one very important thing uh, about exporting is this real-time um, checkbox up here. So this is usually set to on. But uh, if you export, it's highly recommended that you turn this off. Like for this kind of stuff, like this turn in box, it doesn't matter because it's going to run at 60 FPS on pretty much every laptop or computer. But um, often it, it, it drops slightly or even if it stutters once, you don't want to have that in your export. So if you turn this off and export it and it kind of it's choppy or uh, I don't know, just uh, the frame rate is at like 30 or something, it doesn't matter. Because if you if you like uh, record it, it's gonna be smooth. Like the export is gonna be smooth either way. So always turn this off when you export movies. And um, yeah, now I'm gonna show you how to export a loop that is as long as your timeline. So down here, this is your timeline. You you can see um, yeah, it's your timeline. <laughs> um, so if you uh, if you want to have the loop the same length as the timeline, you need to use the timeline chop. So you c I guess there's that's the best way to do that. Um, the length of your timeline, like the timeline, is um, measured in milliseconds. So it's ten seconds long, meaning it's uh, six hundred milliseconds long. So. Um, I uh, just dropped a timeline chop in here, and the frame is always turned to on. And uh, I also turned the end on. Then I used uh, two selects, one to uh, select the frame, because that's what we're going to map, like the value we're going to map. And uh, then I also selected the end value, so basically the length. Um, so we can now map this uh, value. So. I want to just simply um, map the rotation to the length of the timeline. So I use a math job for that. And on the math job, 
I just uh, type the range from zero to this uh, value. So you just drop that in here. And um, yeah, if I change this now to a thousand, then you can see it automatically is going to map that to that value. Um, I'll leave it at 600 now. And uh, I just mapped that to 360, so a whole rotation. And now on the geo, for now, uh, like so far, I've used apps time that frame. Now I'm going to use this value. So I'm going to take that and drop it in here. And now if I drag my timeline along, you're going to see the cube is perfectly spinning around. And now if I want to record that, I need to like I usually just press pause with using the space bar or this button down here and um, then set this to one to like the start frame. And um, now if you go to the f movie file out, you can just press record and then play. Now it actually before you do that, um, set this to once uh, actually makes it a lot easier. So if I set this to once and now press record and play, as soon as this goes uh, reaches the end, like because it's set to one once, it's gonna just stop. And then I can turn this off again. And now it overwrote my old uh, file. If I go here, you can now see it perfectly, like seamlessly loops. Cool. So now you know how to loop. Um, now the last thing is um, using audio, like um, exporting using the audio in Touch Designer. So I I have simply dropped uh, like I simply dropped a uh, an audio file in here, and uh, just left it as uh, at the usual um, usual <laughs> like the default. Uh, file here so that yeah <laughs> okay so um, then I just attach this to a null which is always advisable and then um, I'm gonna actually set this to loop again pause it though and drag this null onto the audio chop on my movie file out all right so <coughs> now wait I can Okay, all good. Um, now you can uh, simply record uh, a part of it if you want to do that. So I'm just gonna hit uh, record now and then stop this again. And now you can see here, now this has audio in it. Amazing, right? So um, the last question you might have um, is how to um, export like a whole track here like a whole song so t how to make the video as long as the the audio file so for that you need to change this to once again set this to one as well and um, then simply change the end value here to the length of the song in milliseconds so this song I looked it up is one minute ten long so one minute 10 seconds, so that's um, 70 seconds, so that's 70,000 um, milliseconds, if I'm correct. I don't know, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> but like, just convert your um, length in minutes to uh, milliseconds. So I'm not sure if this is right, um, but you get it right. And now, if I uh, now you can see this changed here because I changed the end. Now if I drag this like this, I can drag it all the way over there. Now the the timeline is the length of your song. I also tried uh, using like also try to figure that out sim more simply using the info chop, but I don't really find the right uh, like I don't think any of these values are actually of any help for this. So you just need to figure it figure it out manually, and then type that in there. And now you can um, yeah drag this to one again and just record it as I just did. And after it stopped, just uh, record, like turn this off again. And then you're gonna find uh, your whole exported video. All right, so um, if you have any questions, 
feel free to ask as always and uh, if you have any like recommendations what you want me to do in this series um, yeah just tell me and i see you on the next one